I have not experimented with psychedelics. I I don't have I don't like while there is like a curious nature in me the, the I would say the other 99% of me is just like let's not open that door. Um, well, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's I don't, like, I don't know, you know what's going to be on the other side. Cthulhu. Cthulhu could yeah, be on the other he, side. He, could, he very well could I mean, be. That is a really, within the Cthulhu mythos, a lot of the horror comes from the fact that these beings, these extra dimensional beings that are so powerful and, and extra dimensional and, and extraterrestrial beings and that are so powerful and so beyond the scope of human understanding that just the thought of them would drive a, a person insane, a, a regular person. Yeah, and, and the sight they, of them, and, it's set, like just a glimpse yes. of it is just enough to just completely like shatter you. And they communicate with human beings through dreams. That's Cthulhu, mm -hmm. you know, lies in, in the sunken city of Rilia, dead and dreaming. So, you know, Lovecraft, I don't know if he, he did experiment with psychedelics, but a lot of his lore kind of goes into that little, you know, opening the third eye and, and tele telekinetic connections right. with extra dimensional and extraterrestrial beings, um, which is a lot of, a lot of spiritualists and, and Zen people will, will talk about a lot. Right. Um, like the book, doing psychedelics. Um, like, um, like there's one that I was reading called the book where like, um, where this guy, I think he's, um, I think he's part of the clergy. He like, he hears of this book, he finds the book, and the book turns out to be like a book that, like, did, almost like a Necronomicon, but they don't call it the Necronomicon. Yeah. And he, like, it just, it's like a portal to, like, it just takes him to a portal of, like, just to another world, and it, like, scares the crap out of him. Like, it just, it yeah. just terrifies him. Um, and he goes there and he keeps reading the book, and the book, like, has a, comes with a warning, of course, and, he, you know, of course he just doesn't care about, he just doesn't like, he doesn't think anything of it and he mm -hmm. keeps reading it or like he's drawn to read it and he sees the warning, but like the book, it, but like the, the, the pages of the book, it's like, it tempts the person in no matter what. Yeah. And he like, he keeps reading and he keeps going forward with the book until he realizes that he's on a ship that's being teleported basically to wherever it's supposed to go and mm -hmm. it's going into another dimension and he's like seeing things and he stops reading the book so that he can go back to his reality so that he doesn't go any farther because he's mm -hmm. just, he realizes what's going on that he's not in Kansas anymore so to speak and he just shuts the book and he's like I'm not reading this freaking thing and then it just and like he just he just throws it away basically and he's like I can't go any He's like, I don't want to leave this world behind. So I'm like, I don't want to know what else is out there. I've seen enough. I'm not there. Um, and then there's like these, um, like, like Cthulhu is part of like the old gods. Mm -hmm. Where like there's the, I mean, there's another one called like the other gods where like it's somewhat, or like it, it explains how there's like, there's, there's the regular gods in like the present day. The great old ones. Yeah. Where like the... where like life is, it just kind of goes the way it goes, and mm -hmm. there's not really there's not really anything to it. The gods like are a little like like the gods of today are a lot more calm, and um, and like they like they remember the old times, but like they mm -hmm. don't really. But like you know, they kind of like progressed and they and they they do their own thing now. They don't really like involve themselves with humans. They kind of keep to themselves a little like more. Mm -hmm. Um. But then there's the old gods who are the other yeah. gods and the old gods required like human sacrifice. And they had like, they, they were more like, like they, like they were, they made their presence known and they required sacrifices and they would just, they would wreak havoc on the earth if they like weren't pleased and they needed to be pleased. And there mm -hmm. needed to be all these like different rituals that they commanded so that they could like, so that they would allow humanity to like live. So the gods essentially, so the old gods had a God complex essentially <laughs> and right and rightfully so. Um, Cthulhu and um, I don't, is Cthulhu technically an old God or an ancient one, which is it's not, Cthulhu, which is different. Cthulhu is a great old one. Yeah. 
So he's one of the the gods, the great old one gods, the, you know, the ones that are, are, I guess you could say evil, but the thing is, is that about the... Well, I don't, they're like a Lovecraft, chaotic neutral. Right. It, that's the thing is that it, this is so beyond the scope of human understanding that what we would consider evil because they require human sacrifice. So all this is not, you know, humans are nothing to them. You know, humans right. are, are like ants to us, basically, because these are like intensely, intensely powerful extraterrestrial beings that, you know, are, are again, they're so powerful. They're deities um, compared to humanity. Right. And they have their so, own stuff that they got to take care of. Exactly. Um, interesting enough is that if, you know, extraterrestrials are, do exist in real life which i i'm a, a firm believer that extraterrestrials do exist oh i do too it, i'm not crazy it, about that stuff but like i do believe that they i do believe that we have aliens out there and possibly yeah. among us it's definitely like it'd be crazy to think that we're the only intelligent oh, yeah, life out there and i'm using the term intelligent very loosely with the human <laughs> race yeah um it so just like a, 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 a race of beings that could travel the distance required to visit Earth would have would be so far technologically advanced compared to us that again it would be like it would be like us looking at a group of chimpanzees essentially like you know like they you know we look at chimpanzees and we see them like use a stick to as a tool or like oh look they're you know they're using t tools well let's it'd be basically the same thing and like. There's probably there could be beings out there that are like you know extra dimensional beings that it's not even like between us and chimpanzees it's like like literally they'd be gods compared to us because they could travel between dimensional barriers you know this is going into like really crazy theoretical stuff that you know may or may not exist and who who knows if we'll ever know if it does um, so essentially that's like what Lovecraft was kind of talking about with the Cthulhu mythos and the great old ones were basically like just they weren't even necessarily literal gods like you know they weren't like deities that created the universe they were just intensely old intensely powerful and so beyond and so and more advanced than humans that they were essentially just gods to humans basically compared right. to humans so it, it, you know and then you have and then you have the damn cult that yeah, like, because Cthulhu's like dead but dreaming, and you know that's which just kind of means that he's he's not really dead, but he's just dormant. Yes, because like I guess his power just makes it just exhausts him that much. Uh, yeah. and Cthulhu is represented like like the the, the drawings of Cthulhu is um, he's like this giant squid demon monster thing that can fly and like just as it just drives people crazy like just on yeah. seeing it so a lot of the int so and like he does like the thing that i love about hp lovecraft and i think this is the thing that i think this is the thing that helps his story stand the test of time more than anything is that his descriptions of the world and his world building and you know of the psyche that the person is going on everything is very immaculately detailed until mm -hmm. we get to the creatures, where the creatures, they have, like, they're detailed to a point, and that's intentional, where yes. the detail, where, like, everything else is as detailed as it can be, and then when it gets to the creatures, the detail starts to fade a little bit, and it leads you into your own interpretation, so what you picture in your mind scares you more than anything in the world, and yes. that's that's the point is that the more that you have to imagine it's gonna like it's different for every person but like you get the general features so everybody gets an idea but there's these extra little things where you're like oh man well what if it well it might look like this or it might look like that and like no two people right. will have the same complete idea and i th and I that's think... the i think that's the point i think he did i think he, that was intentional that he I did think that. also the fact that the majority of his stories are written in the first person, like as if it's somebody t like that experienced this and is telling their tale now. So it's kind of like an unreliable narrator because the people that are generally telling the story 
have experienced Cthulhu or Dagon or one of the old ones and are literally insane. Like, you know, a, a lot of the stories, like Call of Cthulhu specifically, basically takes place with a guy trying to investigate what happened to his uncle, I believe. And, like, his uncle was investigating the cult of Cthulhu and he finds all these papers and then, like, ends up he's, like, actually, like, literally losing his mind as he gets de delves deeper and deeper into it. Um, and, and a lot of the, the the witnesses to all the events are, like, end up being, like, going crazy and stuff. And that's insanity is a big theme in pretty much every Cthulhu yeah, uh, mythos there's, tale. Yeah, it, is, it's, uh, it's, that, it's like that with, combined with claustrophobia. Yes. Um, and, and things that are so, like, again, beyond the scope of human understanding. When they find Rilia, the, the sunken city, where Cthulhu sits waiting... Um, it's literal. It's it's made of quote unquote non Euclidean ge geometry, which they don't really explain what that is. But I have actually heard it theorized before that some people say that the architecture is similar to like an M C Escher drawing, where mm. like you know staircases going into ways that don't make sense and like things that are kind of like you know where you see like one of those things where it's like an impossible loop where it's like a staircase that goes down, but then it like comes around and it goes somehow it goes like back up to right. like a you go lower a staircase to nowhere yeah it's, it's that kind of architecture where it's like it, it, literally it's not possible for a human mind to comprehend it um which is what drives people insane especially when they see something like cthulhu because you know cthulhu is not small cthulhu is like the size of like godzilla so mm -hmm. when the sailors find cthulhu it's this giant monster with scaly skin and wings and an octopus for a head they literally just lose their minds from just the sight of it yeah um as well and the dagons too the dagons are like yes. these like creatures of the black lagoon kind of mm -hmm. um like these like these fish these like humanoid fish monsters yeah that like they just they just travel in packs and they, you know, they just pick people off every once in a while. Um, or, well, this, I mean, and then there's like, there's the Night Gaunts. With the Night, the Night Gaunts is just a poem. It's outside of the Cthulhu mythos, but it's another creature of like these, these, um, they're just like these, these like demon like entities that just, mm -hmm. they just hunt at night. And they don't have and and they don't have faces. So like there's the there are these faceless demon things that that they just fly and they just kind of pick it off. I guess like I guess you could kind of say like I guess a modern day idea of the night gaunt would be like the Jersey Devil, okay, kind of like yeah. that. Kind of like that idea where it's just like mm -hmm. this this like shape that you just kind of that you just see at night. This weird flying thing, and then when you do see it, it doesn't have a face and it drives you insane. Yeah. Um, Night Gaunt, like, I, I mean, his Lovecraft, Lovecraft's writing, a lot of it was inspired by, like, it, like, it's when, when he was a child, he, like, started writing this stuff. Mm hmm Like, he was, like, I think the earliest writing, they, like, it says here that his earliest known, like, literally works, he was, like, seven. Because he was, like, restyling, like, the Odyssey and like other mythological stories. Yeah. Like he was just like doing poems, but the, um, cause he, cause like as a child, he like, he was infatuated with like the Roman gods. Mm -hmm. Um, and he, uh, and like, he was even like a, he was like a quick witted little like atheist boy. <laughs> um, yeah. when he like, like, I, I don't know if he was, like, truly an atheist, but, like, he had the Christian upgrading and everything like that, because that's just what you, that's just kind of what you were back then. If you mm -hmm. were in America, you were, like, Protestant and, like, Anglo-Saxon or whatever. Um, he, like, at five, somebody told him Santa didn't exist, and his response was, well, why isn't God also a myth? Yeah. Like, <laughs> which... The, which with that response like that'll pretty much like stop any parent dead in their tracks yeah <laughs> just like like oh god i remember like I, i've i've had conversations with my dad about this and like it's all like 
it's like I mean, when, like it's not even just like my, like, just, like just like my dad. Like I'm I'm not I'm not an atheist, but like I'm I'm not an atheist, but I'm not agnostic either. Yeah. I I don't I don't really know where I am. Let's like I'm I'm religiously in flux. Let's just say yeah. I, I I don't really have a term for it. Like like I believe that there's something out there that's bigger than me for sure. That maybe that's why I'm here as a person, or maybe that's why I'm like, or maybe that's why I was chosen to be in this body and not like a deer or -hmm. something like that. (laughs) Bless you, whoever that was. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But I like, I like, I don't know. Like, I feel like there's there's got to be a reason for all this that's beyond my comprehension for sure. Um, Yeah, and I think there is something much larger that is responsible for me being here. But I can't, I can't go to say that it's a God and I should devote my entire life to it. But I acknowledge that there's something that, that there's something there. It's not, that's the, that's like it's the, not um, quite agnostic, but it's not atheistic either. It's de- uh, deism is probably what you're leaning to. So deism is the belief that there is some kind of force would be it a deity or something that ha- that created the universe, but largely stays uninvolved with, like you know, not like where the you know Christianity and other religions where you're praying to a god to like directly involve get involved in your life. Whereas in deism, which there are people that are Christians that are deism that the deists that believe that it's the Christian god, but it, you know it could be any it could really be any deity or or powerful force beyond human understanding. That so deism is essentially like there was something here that created the universe, whether it's an all-powerful god or what have you, and largely stays uninvolved with the affairs, the day-to-day affairs of our lives. You know, kind of just was like, okay, you you have you're alive now. The universe is created now. I'm going to go do my own thing, kind of thing. Uh, you know, it, the prime mover is what it was called, and actually, a lot of the founding fathers were deists. They weren't like everyone's like, oh well, America's a Christian nation, and you know it's like, well, not originally. Not, yes and no, because the founding fathers were not really religious; they were deists. They believed in, you know, some of them were, but like Thomas Jefferson, for instance, it wasn't was Ben Franklin a an atheist. Ben Franklin was also a deist, I believe. Okay. So he, again, he believe, they believed in like the prime mover of the universe that, you know. You know, he, the spark of life comes from this thing, but largely it, the de- the deity is uninvolved with everything, you know, kind of like doesn't really get interfere with nature. And, you know, like, you know, evolution is a product of this deity, but like, you know, not like directly like there, w- there was no intelligent design like evolution was created as a way for life to flourish on its own kind of. Okay, that's uh, me. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's basically what, what the, you know. It's I'm obviously not going into like a full on perfect explanation of it. I'm just trying to like paraphrase what it is, basically. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a lot of the founding fathers were deists. You know, they weren't necessarily. They didn't really necessarily believe that. You know, God was there, like in all things, and knew whatever was happening at all times. You know. Hmm. God was just the prime mover, quote unquote, that, you know, just got things going, started, you know, pushed, pushed the bolt, the the snowball down the hill that eventually like rolled into a giant snowball, you know? Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Well, anyway, so like, so Lovecraft was, um, like, so Lovecraft inspired as like, as a child, but like, there's this one, like, there's this one thing that's like weird thing that happened when like when he was younger there was um like they don't really know if he was close with her but like when his grandma died mm-hmm. like the whole family just like i don't know like like his description is that it's uh, her death sent his family into a gloom from which it full it never fully recovered mm-hmm. uh and his mom and aunts like wearing the black morning gra- uh, dresses like scared the shit out of him and like he was about five and a half right now and he started having the nightmares that would influence his writing later on like he's like 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 he he kept having he kept seeing the night gaunts mm-hmm. in his dreams um 
and he um like he would just have these nightmares of these like night gaunts and he uh and like and 30 years later he finally started like writing about them like in uh -huh. like in in his um stuff and he like wrote for